What is up, everyone? Hello, YouTube. This is Hawked TV. I'm bringing you some Battlefield 4 gameplay today. It's been a minute since I played some Battlefield 4, but I'm trying to get back into it because I'm I'm actually looking very much forward into this Battlefield 1 that's going to be coming out. And those that say, yeah, you played Call of Duty, I do play both games. I like Call of Duty. I like Battlefield. I haven't liked the direction, though, that Call of Duty's went in in the past couple of years. Um, it's kind of been pretty much disappointing, um, you know, to say the least. Um, I, I'm kind of curious as to what the future is going to be for Call of Duty and Battlefield. I know that this is going to, you know, it's going to change the actual roles of you know who's dominating inside the first person shooter genre and i think that that we're going to see a lot of changes over the course of the next couple of years um you know you're going to see uh, a lot of phasing out uh and, and i hate to say that but um you know hopefully something new comes along and i'm i'm expecting that we're going to get a new ip um and I, i'm i'm going to assume that there's going to be a new ip that comes that becomes dominant in the whole gaming sector I don't think that um, a lot of these games are going to uh, be able to hold up to the hype. Um, the most creative that I see, and they, uh, a lot of these games, let me let me say it like this. A lot of game designers, a lot of developing companies, they seem to want to be around what they think is going to be the best thing for it, their customers. All right. The problem with that is, is times change. People change. Opinions change. Okay, that's we're human. That's what happens. Um, you know, we go through cycles. Look, some styles from the 70s have came back. Some styles from the 80s, 90s, and so on and so forth. Things change. People do like consistency, but they also like things to kind of, you know, stay in a in, a, in an area of realism. You know what I'm saying? Like realism, um, if I said that correctly. Um, and a lot of these games um, have been moving in a direction of some kind of futuristic type game. Most people, you know, they really, uh, most people don't want that. You know, they want a level playing field where the weapons are balanced. Um, where if you like SMGs, you like, you know, uh, you can go head to head with an, uh, an assault rifle. You know, people like things to be balanced. They like it to be, you know, where it's a level, you know, where everyone has the same opportunities to be a decent player. You know, you're not going to be outgunned or owned by somebody with gun one versus gun two, you know, and you got to respect that, you know. Uh, so with that being said, you know, it's it's going to be there's going to be a lot of changes. And I, I think it's cool that we're living at a time where, where you're going to see that. And I think that um, you're about to witness over the course of the next couple of years, uh, my prediction, uh, my prediction, and uh, remember this, <clears throat> you're going to see a new IP. The new IP is going to totally obliterate what we have now. It's not going to be, you know, a battlefield. I don't think it's going to be a Call of Duty. I think it's going to be something, you know, that's I, you know, that's a hybrid. You know, I think that we're going to see a hybrid that, that really really hits to the core you know like you know our first battlefield experience or our first call of duty experience you know i think we're going to see that same feeling you know and and i'm excited for that but at the same time i do see things starting to slide off with call of duty um i do see a lot of you know a lot of negativity that's that's always been around call of duty because it was always a uh, uh, I guess I, I want to say an outcast game, but it wasn't because it was pretty mainstream. Um, but Battlefield was kind of, you know, always taking up the rear with Call of Duty as far as sales. Um, now, and, and the amount of people, you know, when Battlefield would come out, you would see a lot of people still play Call of Duty and you'd be you'd be texting your friend or you'd be messaging your friend or you'd be in a chat with your friend and be like, man, why don't you get this game? And. You know, they're like, nah, you know, I already got Call of Duty. That's all I need. But you, you can't be closed-minded. You know, you need to kind of be a little more open to exploring additional venues to, to you know, better your game. I mean, you know, it, it's cool that you're great with Call of Duty. And if you're, it's cool that you're great with Battlefield. Um, but, you know, you need to be able to be multi-usable. 
you know, or multi-gamer, you, you should be able to do that. And um, I, But I think we're going to see a big change. I mean, I, I think there's going to be something new that comes out. Um, games come, games go. Look at the SOCOM series. SOCOM was one of my favorite games. It was a tactical shooter. I enjoyed the hell out of that game. Loved it. Was highly addicted to that game. Um, they turned it into a bunch of pancake flop and destroyed it. You know, so now it's gone. And I don't ever expect to see that game back. Um, you know, I know there's something on the, on the horizon with this game called H Hour. But I'm wondering if that will even make it to PlayStation. Uh, right now it's on PC in development. But it's still not SOCOM. You know, it's still not the SOCOM I, I grew to love. Um, and Battlefield, you know, I, I played the first Battlefields on... My first Battlefield experience was PS2. And I loved it. You know, I fucking loved that game. You know, it was it was fucking amazing. You could get in a chopper. You could get in a in a tank. Uh, Bad Company came out. Fucking loved Bad Company. The first one was amazing. Uh, the story, you know, it was kind of like you know, I'm not a big story player, but you know, the, the the game, you know, itself. I went through the story like three times. You know, it was just it was phenomenal. I mean, I loved that game. Um, you know, Bad Company 2 was a decent game. It wasn't no Bad Company 1, but, you know, it was a good game. Uh, then you have Call of Duties. You know, I mean, you had, uh, my favorite, and, you know, let me know what your favorite is in the comment section below, but my favorite for Battlefield would be Bad Company, would be number one. That would be the number one game. Um, then you would have... Bad Company 2, Call of, you know, uh, Bad Company 2 was good. Um, then you had um, Call of Duty. Uh, in the Call of Duty genre, I would say uh, Modern Warfare, the first one, was a great, was a, an amazing game. Uh, what made that amazing to me was the G3. Uh, it was an amazing, beautiful piece of hardware. Uh, that made me fall in love with that game. I'm a precision shooter. I like to precisely shoot. And I love playing hardcore. So that kind of, you know, that's where a lot of my clan stuff came from. Um, that's where I picked up a lot of memories. Uh, so I, I think I have a lot of memories tied to that game. So I think that's why I have a lot in common with that game. So, uh, And my second favorite Call of Duty would be Black Ops 1. Uh, the very first one. Uh, they were both amazing games. Amazing games. Uh, and I'm hoping that we all can get those memories and, and fond likenesses and, you know, back with Battlefield 1. Uh, I hope that we're able to make those connections, you know, kind of like we did back in the day, you know, with with our friends, you know. Um, I think a lot of these games nowadays are kind of selfish. You know, they, they don't really demand much you know, uh, game, teamwork, realistically. I mean, there's not much teamwork involved in certain shooters, and I think that's where a lot of people find a sense of separation. Um, and, and it's cool to feel wanted and needed, especially when you're playing a game. You know, you want to feel needed. You want to feel wanted, and, you know, that's what you want. That's what you expect out of a game. And uh, I, I'm just hoping that, you know, they, they can figure a medium out to where everyone can be happy uh, your casual, everyday gamers can be happy. Your hardcore wanting to get into it can be happy. You know, and that's what I'm wanting for us as gamers. Um, you know, there's just a lot of things. And one of my, I, I want to say this because I, I've been wanting to mention this in a video. And I'm sorry I'm, I'm ranting and raving, but, you know, there's a lot of opinions I have. Uh, and, you know, I mean, and let me know what yours are. I mean, you know, let me know what you think. But, uh, good or bad, you know, I, I really, you know, what you say, it's not going to offend me, you know, because I, I, I just, I speak the truth, I speak my mind. And that's what my gaming channel is about. Uh, I love to game. You know, I love to interact with YouTube. I mean, I love you guys. I've got a lot of love out of the community. You know, it's made a lot of things possible for me in life. Um, you know, uh, I wasn't born with a silver spoon by any means in my mouth. Um, you know, I, it, it, it just is what it is. But back to what I was saying, you know, there's a lot of things that, um, that I, I wish they would stop, especially in a gamer's aspect. 
Um, what I wish they would stop is all the extra bonus stuff. Like, I, I can understand you want to sell some map packs. Okay. I can deal. The map packs are, you know, that's something. You, that's another way you guys make money. And that's okay. You know, uh, the season pass. You know, okay. You know, I can, I can deal with that as well. Uh, but when you're dealing with, let me sell you some care packages. Let me sell you some coins. Let me sell you some crates. Let me sell you this. Let me sell you that. I, I just think that it's it that's taking advantage of the gamers. I think that all of that stuff is taking advantage of the gamers, and it's just a money racket. When you start seeing those types of things, I think it's a money racket, and it's disgraceful. I, I think it's sad. You know, um, you've done made enough money off the game. Uh, we've bought the map packs. We've done all we needed. You know, a lot of things should be free. There shouldn't be all of this extra bullshit. You should not be able to buy your rank. You should not be able to, to purchase just because you're wealthy. You purchase and you have the most powerful, most devastating weapon in, in the whole damn game. I, I just think that's unfair. And I wish game companies would stop doing that. I, I think it's it's upsetting. But uh, anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, please stick around, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about all this. I mean, all right, what do you think of all this extra shit you got to buy? Uh, Till next time, guys. This has been Hawked. Hope you stick around. Click that like, hit that share, and subscribe. Subscribe, damn you, subscribe. But till next time, you guys take care.